Hello, everyone. Um, I'm today. I'm going to uh, show you how to play my um, blocks cards ripoff game, Demon Cards. It's not really a ripoff. I just said that as a joke, but like, um, there's a lot of uh, unique mechanics here. Um, so let's first get off with the basics of um, card costs. Um, each card costs what their stats list. So, uh, Old Trail has 2 HP and 1 mana, and over here is your HP, Strength, Block, and Mana. And I'll explain what each of those stats do for your character in a second. So, um, let's summon Trail. Can't seem to rotate it right, but... And boom, it's on the board. And when you place a fighter, your pips drain, and then replace. So it goes down, and then it goes back up. But um, you, can, you don't have to afford a fighter to place it either. For example, let's say we summon a future king. It will place with the amount of stats you afford. <coughs> and you will take life according to the amount of stats you could not afford. Each pip you miss for that fighter is, um, to life you lose. So missing three pips would make me lose um, six life. Not sure if this is correct though. Um, yeah. And basically normally um, your fighters would enter stunned, as you can tell by this icon here. That means they are stunned and cannot attack. Uh, and let me go over some of the stats right now. HP is um, your hit points, obviously. Very self-explanatory there. Strength is um, how much damage you do. And, you know, you, you will see soon when um, my opponent here, which is me, uh, places a card. Let's do that now, in fact. And here we have a rogue. And um, what mana does is it allows you to use spells or actions. Basically, spells do not drain from your pit mana, it drains from a card's mana. 
So in order to use a spell, you must have a card on the board with mana. So my opponent will use Fireball, draining mana from this rogue, and attacking my trail. And I, I might cut this, but I think it will still be good. My trail died. And, um, this rogue can't move. And this will unlock my future king. Now, you probably noticed me mess with my pips there. That's because I made a mistake that just now. Um, this video is kind of scripted, but, like, I can make mistakes, so, um... I forgot to change the pips because when Future King was summoned, what is supposed to happen is um, it refunds its pip. Basically, a card will always refund its full cost whenever you summon it. So since I summoned Future King, I should have stayed at 4 HP two, and gone to 2 strength, 2 block, and 2 mana. But what also happens when a card dies is that, and I forgot to drain the HP for the trail too, uh, what happens is um, that card drains its cost then. So the 2 HP and 1 mana of the trail uh, affected my um, cost. Or my pips, that is. And at the beginning of your turn, you will always draw to a full hand. So, if you want, like, there isn't much way, like, if you probably notice, from what I've told you so far, there isn't much way for you to gain pips. But you can um, sacrifice a card, which will destroy it. And that will give you the amount of pips that it costs. So let's sacrifice a trail. Giving me that much. <coughs> and um, let me play another future king, this time fully summoning it, and I faced it the wrong way, but whatever. There we go. And um, when a card that has block enters the field, that block basically spreads to all the other fighters. And um, block on your field is supposed to drain at the end of, I mean, at the beginning of your turn, always, too. That kind of stuff is hard for me to keep track of. But... That is a thing that is supposed to happen. And um, 
So basically block goes before your HP and it can basically is absorb damage for you. It's it's like a shield, obviously. And um another function that mana has is it blocks me from attacking the opponent's life directly. Uh, what I mean by that is, like, if a, if the opponent still had one mana, then I couldn't attack the life directly. But since uh, my opponent used a spell, draining the rogue of its mana, I can um, attack this life. But uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I am going to uh, attack this rogue because I have block at the ready. And it won't be there for my next turn. And the card basically trades like that. Um, and then I end my turn. My opponent will, uh, attack, uh, Future King, and this always happens in the tutorial. And that drains their pips. So I'm going to have go ahead and make the opponent summon a trail to demonstrate myself using a action card. And it refunds the pips like so. And a trail, you see that it plays with one mana even though my opponent couldn't afford it. On half summon, this card costs nothing. I forgot to read the bef effect before, but um, yeah, when you when you place it down a card, you don't have enough stats for that. It's called a half summon, and uh, this is called a full summon when you place it with its full stats. Uh, let me draw cards in my hand. And there's what I need. This fireball is the only action in the game that tells you exactly how to use it. So I'm going to drain mana from my future king and have it attack the rogue. Making my opponent's mana scuffed AF. And then I'm going to um, attack my opponent directly again. Should bring them to 13 life. And uh, I'll go ahead and summon a chef. And a chef, by the way, can can like basically give a target permanent one block as long as it's alive. So let's uh. Do that. And it will be indicated by um, just this here. And I usually do this, but sometimes I don't bother because you can get the point, and sometimes chefs just um, die anyways.
Um, yeah. And um, I'm going to just play the tutorial out like normal. Because in the tutorial, it's supposed to, like, the opponent is supposed to mess up. Summon a guard, bringing its HP down to 3. And for some reason, that tagged. And uh, since the opponent doesn't have card mana on the board, I can attack the opponent directly and win. Yeah, that's the tutorial for uh, demon cards. As you can see, there are many cards in this game. And um, some terminology I haven't covered, like the rogue's instant status that lets it uh, attack immediately after being full summoned. And um, yeah, there is a bunch of options here. Uh, I think I will also go over a uh, fight against um, myself with the starter deck. Let me go ahead and show you that right now. So this is like the file player inventory. Only close friends can get this inventory type. But, um, it basically shows you the starter deck, and you can um, edit this even when you don't aren't online if you have this profile type. Basically, it gives you complete freedom with your deck, and it's a, it's a pretty convenient thing. Yeah, it has four trails, and the trails you saw in the tutorial is the old trails. This one is different. Four chefs, two rookie builders, two future kings, two fairies of the wind, which have this effect, um, three fireballs, uh, these legendaries here. You can see their effect pretty good. And two rogues. Um, I'll go ahead and pause the recording and get the battle set up. And I'll be right back. Alright. Uh... Let's continue. Yeah, it's going. Let's continue. Um, basically, uh, hold on, let me. I thought that should be fine. And, um,. Basically, I draw cards by using this uh, wheel here. So let's get my first four cards. Hi, Sandra. My dog just came up to me. So, so far I get two trails, a future king, one fairy of the land, and a fireball. Not bad, all things considered. And let's see what the opponent gets, which will be represented by um, 
sublime here. For some reason, the sublime character always seems to get Callisto on her first draw. The same thing happened when one of my uh, friends played against her, because basically uh, there are some preloaded uh, decks that a few characters represent. Oh. Shit. I shouldn't say that. Okay, I'm gonna re-roll some lines. And... Because that wasn't supposed to be there. Okay, a rogue. And what do you know? She's still top decks Callisto. And I'm basically doing this so you can uh, possibly get a better understanding of the game here. And uh, let's check who goes first. Should do a random number generator for that. Two is sublime. I go first. It should theoretically be an even match because I'm playing against myself. But uh, who knows? Let's see. Who will come out on top here? Gonna summon a trail, and it's the same effect as before. So, since it costs nothing, it gets placed with two and two and it doesn't drain because again it costs nothing so that would leave me on six one one three and i'm gonna summon a fairy of the wind facing the wrong way of course that's fine And end my turn. Should delete my cards. There it is. Now, I think I'm going to have Sublime. save for Callisto until she can um, safely summon, well, I guess she can already safely summon him, so, uh, yeah, mark that, I changed my mind, sacrifice builder, 
That would mean she can summon Callisto. Which will have two mana. One HP. And two block. And I'm going to summon a rogue. And that's a full summon, so the rogue gets to attack immediately. And I'll have yeah, I'll have him attack the uh, trail. Now it's my turn again. Should be a zero. Um, well, I guess not, since it should be a one four because uh, the trail made it six three. Yeah. <coughs> and I get Callisto too. Lissel accepts better. And another fireball. Now I don't, I guess I can uh, sacrifice future king in order to get Lissel on the board, which would be a good idea actually. Callisto is good. Also, her Callisto should power up now since it's the end of the turn, as seen in the effect. On full summon after one turn, this fighter gains six strength, only activates once. Six, three, three, and three. Seven, Dama. and Cast a fireball. Honestly, cast two fireballs on the Oculus, though. Well, I only needed one, but I guess I already believed it, so I guess um, I'll just stuff the board up. That one mean minus two here, minus two here, minus two here, and minus two here, minus two here, and that should be good.
and the nitrogen is still powered up. It's Sublime's turn. Trust me that those motor bu bucket noises hurt my ears more than it does your work. Where is Rai? There, there he is. So this deck is supposed to be resigned, so you never have to, like, um, half summon a fighter. But sometimes you get unlucky, like how I just, like, bombed the opponent's pick. Yeah, sometimes that can just happen. And now Sublime is, like, at a severe disadvantage. Uh, Rai is really good. I'm wondering if I should sacrifice future king for him. I think I'll just... play a fairy and no that was a bad idea I mean I make the rule that I can't that no one can take back their plays once it's on the board so gonna have to live with that and I think I'm going to half summon a future king as well. Because a future king will have um, mana and I will be able to destroy Callisto. Use the mana, cast a fireball on crystal. Should be one strength. And honestly, um, Future King is too undefended at the moment, so I, I will uh, 
cast dry too. Basically doing my third reward. Or to the one's third reward, I guess. And I'm gonna have Rai since he's a tech, since he's a trigger is a target trigger. There we go. Okay, my turn now. I get a rogue. A chef. My last fireball, I'm pretty sure. And removing these will make the game go faster, so... And another trail. Not doing so hot, right? I mean, a fireball will be able to destroy Rai and combine that with a rogue. Action spamming isn't the most exciting strategy, but actions are like a pretty valuable resource in this game because they're supposed to be it. So I'll use my final fireball on Rye to bring him down to 1 HP. And then I will summon a rogue. That should be good. And I have enough for a chef. Let's do it. And make the chef target the rogue. And I get to attack Y without losing any.
card HP whatsoever. That would mean Future King would get his uh, all stats down. Not that. Well, it does matter, but. Uh, okay. So the lime's turn. Sublime ain't doing too hot anymore. Best she can do now is stall. So I'm gonna have her summon a trail. Summon a chef. Well, no, didn't place it yet, so sacrifice a trail. Summon a chef. Uh, make it target the trail. Use a fireball on the fairy. Arguably, I should have used it on the road, but it's done. I try to go fast with the um, AI fights. Maybe I should like think my moves out a little bit more. But what's done is done. I'm not really too torn up about this inconsequential uh, fight against myself. Talk to, talk about an inner turmoil. Am I right? Stutter, stutter, stutter.
All right. Shuffles are not. I mostly need damage on the board now, TBH. So I'm going to sack trail. I could have played trail, but I don't want my uh, pips to go away. Play uh, builder. I forgot about the block. Oh wow. Also the rogues mana and block are inverted. Again, oh wow. But I don't have plenty of life to spend. And then Yeah, I don't need a fairy out at the moment. I think I'm good. So have rogue attack the trail. Well, and have a chef attack the trail. And it is Sublime's turn. Got a chef. Another chef. A fairy. And a rookie builder. Honestly, she can um, probably place a lot on the board now. Um, the trail won't be half summoned, so might as well sacrifice it. Two, one, two. Also, this should be negated now. Summon pretty much my whole hand. Maybe minus Loki Builder, I'll think about it. Yes. Didn't know why that didn't place.
and I can have a, the chef that isn't doing some shield crap right now and have it attack the rogue. And it is my turn. Magic Shield, the card I didn't show you in the Star Deck. Um, it was in there, I just forgot to show you it. I'm pretty sure. Also, I don't know why the name is covering that. I don't think that's happened before. And another shot. Rogue shouldn't have taken damage there, I'm dumb. Well. More chefs coming out. I was thinking about adding a rule where you can only um, place two cards per turn. But I do feel like it uh, kind of ruins some pip strategies a bit. I don't know. I, I also thought about having a terrain that makes it so when you use it, both players have to follow that rule. So that would kind of add that mechanic into the game. I don't know if that's the best way to do that either. But who knows? I might like tinker around with something like that. Loki Builder has too much HP right now. All right. I would be able to damage <coughs> Barry of the Wind right now. Like, I would, uh, Rogue would uh, take off Fairy's shield, and, um, the rest can just damage it, and it will bring it down to 1 HP. Don't know if that is the best idea, seeing now that I can just wipe out a chef, and theoretically get it, get it done more efficiently, in exchange for taking damage, which is fine. One block. Oh, 
Oops. Oh well, you can see behind the curtain a little bit. Not that it's an impressive curve anyway. Honestly, that's probably what she needs right now, a future king. Oops, wrong card. Where is the rogue? There it is. And a trail. Now this board is currently like a mess, but I think Future King, well both Future King and Rogue is the best choice right now. So sacrifice the Builder. Two, three, one, oops, and one, and play, should play the rogue first. So the block will spread over to him. And then play the future king. That should, also these cards shouldn't have blocked, but it's whatever. Okay, so Right now, there is four damage on Sublime Ford. I'll just have her take out one of the shafts then. Is that right? Yeah. The back one. And the uh, minimum the HP pips can be is one, so you can at least summon fighters. And that makes it my turn again. Oops. Future King and Rookie Builder. There it is.
basically drew the same hand that she did. And Yeah, I'm just going to repeat what she did badly. Wrong way. Yeah, not much else I can do with value, so I'm going to have the chef should be not stunned right now. I'm going to have honestly, let's have all of them attack the future king. So that should get rid of its block. The builder and the chef take it down, meaning there's one more damage left on the board that I can use. Meaning, uh, Sublime is pretty, uh, in the rough right now. I don't know why I want to, what's it called? Anyways, uh, the last chef. Attacks. Honestly, no one. There's nothing productive that that chef can do. Leaving it to be Sublime's turn. This shouldn't be here. And now. Sublime is starting to deck out. I believe she drew a fireball and another trail. Uh, I'll explain what happens when you run out of cards. And that this is a common thing with this battle because like this deck is designed to also have a lot of mana, so um, it's hard to lose a lot of face HP. This is basically um, a survival deck, if that's what you want to call it. A survival deck with um, some spicy fireball action. Use the fireball. Um, rogue. Because rogue is still the biggest threat. I'm pretty sure. Well, also future king, but I'd say future king is less of a threat. OK, 
Okay, my turn. Smiling jewel, why? And a uh, rogue. Yeah, I have enough to summon Ryan, honestly. I'm going to make it target the rogue again. And it should be back to three block, actually four block because of Ryan. Two chefs, rise block and rise buff. These should no longer have block. Well, it will again soon, but neither should be used. Anyways. And one more. And, uh, I'm going to deck out next turn if I, um, summon a rogue. Is it worth it? Honestly, uh, I think I'm better trying to outlast her for now. All right. Also, I'm pretty sure all of the chefs died. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, all the chefs supporting Barry of the Wind, so only having one, which means I can just kill it. She should also have much more HP than this. I'll bring it to 40, because Barry of the Wind, she had two, 44. Not that the game will let me, apparently. Okay. That. You get the point. I, I hope that doesn't bring some kind of, um, me having to redo all of these numbers because that would suck. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, attacking um, this. And that should put this down and this down as well. Now that her mana, I mean her, basically Rogue is the only one left protecting her life. I do want to clear that out, but there is a, a strategy because we don't want to um, drain attack here 
and I'll explain why I put too many shields up. Uh, let's see, I'll have the chef and the future builder. Future king, I mean. Attack. Area of the wind. That should mean no more health or mana pips. And that basically means I win, but I have one more chef to attack with, so I guess I'll attack this guy right here. So basically, when you run out of cards to draw, you drain one of each pip, lose two life, and lose two more lives for each pip you have at zero. So that is two, four, six, eight, six, yeah, eight per turn. That sublime is, um, losing. So back to 38, I believe. Not that it will display for some reason, but, um, Normally here, this is where the opponent will forfeit, and uh, yeah, I don't think there is any way for Sublime to win this, so I'll just have her forfeit, and uh, that will be it for this recording. Um, you know, I, I not sure many people will watch that part of this video you know the whole battle part i didn't really say you could skip this but you can it doesn't really show you that much new uh, i just kind of thought like since this game is kind of complicated i would do a uh how to play for it and um Yeah, I might do this for other games of mine that are complicated, like uh, Burnt Earth and um, uh, Lawful War by Execution. So, um, don't expect it though. If you you if you're not, if you're not new to this channel, I'm very bad at consistency when it comes to recording. But I do plan on doing how to play videos for those eventually. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed what this was. Uh, let me know if you want to see other how to plays of some of my games. And, uh,